They say when you're about to die, you see your entire life flash before your eyes. They lied. The only thing Nick O'Shea could see flashing was Kyrian Hunter's vampire fangs. That horrifying sight froze him in place on the elegant mahogany staircase at the front of Kyrian's sprawling antebellum mansion. I'm going to die. Again. Yeah, since he'd attempted to go to school about 22 hours ago and found out his principal had been eaten by a zombie, everything in its brother had been after him. Now his friggin' boss was a vampire. It figured. So much for his paycheck. Unless the devil could cash it, Nick would never see a nickel of it. Would this day ever end? Dude, right now, you're the one who's about to end. That thought finally shattered the terrified fog in his head, which had held him immobile. Run, dude, run. He couldn't go downstairs, because that was where Kyrian stood. The only place to run was upstairs, after his mother, who'd already gone into the bedroom Kyrian lent them for the night. She was completely oblivious of the fact that they were in mortal danger and that their blood was about to be drained. He spun around to warn her. Nick, wait! Wait, my gluteus maximus. Vampire was shy a few quarts of blood if he thought Nick had any intention of not going Casper on him. I'm too young, too smart, and too good-looking to die. Yeah, and then some. The world needed him to improve the gene pool. Not to mention, at 14, he hadn't even had his first date yet. He'd only just this night had his first kiss. He should have recognized that alone as a sign that the apocalypse was coming and that his death was imminent. As Nick neared the top of the stairs, Kyrian jumped straight up from the floor 20 feet below and flipped over the shiny railing to land gracefully in front of him and cut off his escape. Kyrian's black eyes flashed in the shadows. Dressed in all black and at over six feet in height, Kyrian made a deadly impressive sight even with his boyish blonde curls. There was no way to get past him. Crapola. Nick skidded to a halt. What should he do now? His mom was in a bedroom a few feet behind Kyrian. He'd yell for her, but the last thing he wanted was for Kyrian to kill her too. Maybe if he kept quiet, Kyrian would drain only him. It's not what you think, Nick. Yeah, right. I think you're a blood-sucking demon vampire who's gonna kill me. That's what I think. Before he could so much as blink, Kyrian reached out and grabbed Nick's neck with some kind of Vulcan death grip. He wanted to fight, but he was as helpless as a pup being held by the scruff. With the inhuman strength you'd expect from the undead, Kyrian hauled Nick past his mother's temporary bedroom and into his host's upstairs office. As in the rest of the house, the floor-to-ceiling curtains were drawn shut to protect against the dawning sun— something that should have clued Nick in that Kyrian was a ghoul from the first moment he stepped into the mansion. The dark wood of the desk blended in seamlessly with the dark green walls. Without breaking stride, Kyrian flung Nick into a black leather chair. When he started to bolt, Kyrian slammed him back into the chair. Stop a minute and listen. I know I'm asking the impossible from you, but for once in your life, shut your mouth and open your ears. I'm not the one talking. Kyrian glared at him. Don't get smart with me. You want me stupid, Nick? Nick held his hands up. Fine. Just don't eat my mom, okay? She's had a bad enough life without becoming the bride of Dracula. I don't drink blood. He arched a brow at that. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I don't. I'm not a vampire. This from the one with the long, freaky canines. Then... What's with your peculiar dental problem, huh? And don't even try to tell me they're fake, Mr. Armani suits and fancy car, because you ain't the type to have false ones. And all that also says, you have the money to fix them if you wanted to. Not to mention the fact, you don't go out in daylight. And how did you ninja flip up the stairs just now if you're not one of the undead? I'm... gifted. And I'm gone. Nick tried to bolt, and again, Kyrian body slammed him into the chair hard enough to get his attention. You know about Asheron and you accepted it. Why don't you trust me? Asheron Parthenopaeus was a giant, immortal... something. But even so, he'd been nothing other than nice to Nick and his mom. And most important, he don't got no fangs. Yes, he does. He's just better at hiding his than I am mine. He's also my boss. Nick would argue he was full of cow manure, but that explanation actually made sense in a weird way. 
Ash was more than 11,000 years old and had seemed a peculiar friend for Kyrian to have. But if the immortal giant was Kyrian's boss, that explained everything. Still, Nick wasn't a fool, and he accepted nothing at face value. For all he knew, Kyrian was lying his fangs off. What line of work are you in? People protection. Like saving punk kids getting beat to death by people who are supposed to be their friends? That is, me getting shot by Alan and stomped into the ground by Tyree and Mike a couple of weeks ago. That's how the two of them had met, and what had led to his working part-time for Kyrian after school. Kyrian inclined his head to him. Exactly. Nick relaxed a degree as he reminded himself how much he owed Kyrian. But for Kyrian, he'd be dead right now. So, you're not going to attack my mother or suck my blood? Good gods, no. I don't need the indigestion. You've caused me enough of a headache for one night. I don't need any more. 